Thank you for joining me at EmpowerVI.com for a special presentation on solving our energy crisis in the US Virgin Islands. In the face of the closing of Avenza and the government anticipating a huge ripple effect, possibly resulting in an estimated 10,000 further job losses, things look pretty bleak for the Territory. I believe renewable energy is the key to securing a brighter future that President Obama addressed recently. New sources of American-made energy. Now right now we are experiencing just another painful reminder of why developing new energy is so critical to our future. Just like last year, gas prices are climbing across the country. This time it's happening even earlier. And when gas prices go up, it hurts everybody. Everybody who owns a car, everybody who owns a business. It means you've got to stretch a paycheck even further. It means you've got to find even more room in a budget that was already really tight. And that means we can't just rely on fossil fuels from the last century. We, we can't just allow ourselves to be held hostage to the ups and downs of the world oil market. We've got to keep developing new sources of energy. Double down on clean energy industries that have never been more promising. That's what we need to do. But as long as I'm president, I will not walk away from the promise of clean energy. Your future is too important. I will not. I will not cede. I will not give up. I will not cede the wind or the solar or the battery industry to China or Germany because some politicians in Washington refuse to make the same commitment here in America. We've got to look at the facts, look at the science, figure out what we need to do. We may not have a silver bullet, but we do have in this country limitless sources of energy, a boundless supply of ingenuity, huge imagination, amazing young people like you, all of which can put, all of which we can put to work to develop this new energy source. Renewable resources like wind and solar are intermittent. They're not available all of the time, although here in the USVI we enjoy the comparatively constant trade winds. The ability to store energy from these renewables is critical to allow us to use such resources for the majority of our energy needs. Extreme Power in Texas is one of the emerging companies offering the solution and has solved this problem on islands just like ours. Carlos Co, CEO of Extreme Power. So as everyone knows, wind and solar are great resources to have because they're renewables. The disadvantage of them is that they're not always predictable about when you would have power out of that renewable. So what we can do is add, uh, turn a variable power source like renewable into firm dispatchable power. Ken Hashman, I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Extreme Power. Through our ability to digitally manipulate power, if the output from a wind farm drops or the output from solar drops, we can kick in and hold that constant power output for a long period of time and therefore making integration of renewables into the grid really easy and really affordable. So in Hawaii, the first project we worked on was on Maui. That seems like a tough place to do a project, but it was on top of a mountain. And that first project was a pilot project to show that we could, in real time, smooth out the output from wind farms. Then the second project is a place called Kuhuku, which is on the island of Oahu near the North Shore where they have all the great surfing championships. We went out in association with a 30 megawatt wind farm where our system is 15 megawatts in size and is large enough to not only support the output of the wind farm but support the uh, line voltage that's out there as well. So that 30 megawatt wind farm uh, is powering that entire north side of the island. And so those 10,000 people are getting virtually all their power from that wind farm. I'm Jeff Layton. I'm the VP of Operations here at Extreme Power. This is our proprietary power cell technology that we use in our energy storage systems. There's a kilowatt hour of energy stored here, and we use these in matrices, and a thousand of these will power a, a small city for quite some time. When we have the power, how do we distribute it? 
as electricity from our wind farm and other renewables become the dominant sources of our energy, we're going to need a smart electrical grid system to distribute, share and use these resources efficiently. The Danes lead the way in this technology with a smart grid that allows two-way flow of electricity, for example the installed solar and even your electric car to stabilise the grid system. As in Denmark, our existing power generation will be able to ramp up or down as demand and supply from renewables fluctuate. The Danes will be meeting 50% of their demand for their 5.5 million people by 2025 and be a full net exporter of energy into the European grid by 2050. We can beat them to it by installing a 300 megawatt shore floating wind farm. We use only 105 megawatts on average and feed the power to our only 110,000 population through the already proposed grid that links our islands together through Puerto Rico. I believe if we act now a far brighter future awaits us where we can not only be energy independent by 2020, no longer held hostage by escalating fossil fuel prices, but additionally position ourselves as a net exporter of renewable energy, not only in electricity, but also in the power generation technology that we will assemble here, not only empowering ourselves, but the whole Caribbean region. We need to act now to re-employ those laid off, many of whom have the skill sets to meet the needs of this new energy industry. We can get right to work on our smart grid, re-employing the large amount of skilled electricians. American companies such as GE can help us and will encourage federal funding, as seen already in Hawaii where this infrastructure is being put in place. Firstly, we need to build an empowered people smart grid, networked by the internet, email, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and more, so we can truly harness the potential of our democracy to move us forward. When the Danes were here, windmills dotted the landscape, but the people were enslaved. We see oil-rich nations with their populations living in abject poverty, their governments emboldened by their immense wealth, which they use to oppress their own people. Here it can be different, we can build an online community of interconnection, engaging in our future, smartly sharing and empowering ourselves with knowledge. Knowledge truly is power. The first and most powerful smart grid in the Caribbean, ensuring our newfound wealth is equitably shared. Now we need action from our legislature in the form of support in the feasibility study outlined by Dr. Dagar of the University of Maine, who heads up the largest floating wind project in the world that will place 5,000 megawatts of floating wind turbines in the Gulf of Maine by 2030, making them an energy-rich state exporting onto the US national smart grid. What Maine will produce is more than 47,000 times more power than we use here in the Virgin Islands. Um, so, so what's the plan? How do, we, how do we develop offshore wind? Well, offshore wind actually is a developed industry in Europe. Europe is the leader in offshore wind technology that built the first offshore wind farm in 1991. But Europe has done one thing, it is shallow water offshore wind farms within the 100 feet or less. They have shallow waters across Europe. Uh, and we don't. We don't off the coast of Maine. We have deep waters off the coast of Maine. So how do you deal, build an offshore wind farm? What you do out there is you, you go out and say in 50 feet of water and you have a big jack up barge. It's a big barge that jacks itself off the seafloor and it has a huge crane on it that can lift 400 tons, 300 feet up in the air. Now these towers are not small that they're building. They're 300 feet to, to, to the hub from the water level. The blades are 150, 160 feet long. That's what they're putting out there. But it costs a lot of money to assemble these offshore because of all the equipment you have to get out there in the kind of weather you have to work with. So what we wanted to do is do it better than Europe. Okay, so what we're going to do is float these structures. Okay, float them, yes. Float uh, uh, structures that are bigger than the Washington Monument. Yes, I have not lost my mind. It can, it, <laughs> yes, it can be done. It can be done. Uh, there's, a, there's an Ocean Energy Task Force uh, that the previous governor put together that I served on that, that put a plan together after two years to generate five gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030 in the Gulf of Maine. Five gigawatts. That's five nuclear power plants worth of wind by 2030. This could herald the end of the controversy over where your wind turbines go. It's the world's first full-size floating wind turbine being towed into the deep waters off the coast of Norway. Seas previously too deep to mount a turbine where winds are often stronger than onshore. The High Wind Project is the brainchild of Norwegian energy company Statoil Hydro. 
Moving wind farms miles away from the coast could also solve the problem of noise reduction, which sees onshore farms using less efficient turbines to limit any disturbance. Statoil Hydro say this turbine should be producing electricity within months, heralding a new era in wind power generation. Stuart McDill, Reuters. Uh, so we're happy to help to the extent that we can and, and, um, and uh, provide the experience we've learned over the last few years on this. Um, uh, it could be part of, uh, if you're going to do a feasibility study that we talked about, we, could, uh, we can help frame that study and, and uh, help, uh, help you coordinate conducting the study uh, and then write, help you write the report if you wish. Uh, that's something we could do in a, in a short range. Uh, um, I think um, uh, that, that's, that's the first thing that should be done with these, get that feasibility study done. And we can help frame it for you and uh, coordinate it for you. And, and uh, we prefer, of course, to help use uh, some of your local uh, capabilities as well. In closing, I'd like to say that in these difficult times facing our territory and all our families, we can look to what has been accomplished by people faced with much greater challenges than our own, with far fewer resources with which we are blessed. I would like to share with you some humbling words of a young man, William Kamgwamba from Malawi, Africa whose village in 2001 faced starvation caused by drought and a failure of the maize crop they grew. At the age of 14, no longer able to attend school due to lack of family funds and hunger, he went to a library that had been set up by an international organization and saw a picture of a windmill, which he then set about building from parts he found at the local dump so that his village could make electricity and ultimately pump water for the crops. He succeeded and saved his village. Now internationally recognized in his recent TED talk, I Harness the Wind, he related his story. Another machine pumps water for irrigation. Queues of people start lining up at my house <laughs> to charge their mobile phone. I could not get rid of them. And the reporters came too, which led to bloggers, and which led to a call from something called Ted. I had never seen an aeroplane before. I had never slept in a hotel. So, on stage that day in Arusha, my English lost. I said something like, I tried and I made it. So I would like to say something to all the people out there, like me, to the Africans and the poor who are struggling with your dreams. God bless. Maybe one day you will watch this on the internet. I said to you, trust yourself and believe. Whatever happens, don't give it up. Thank you.